So we're going to talk about transforming formulas, which you've been doing for a long time because transforming formulas is just solving equations. It's using your field axioms and your properties of equality uh, to change the way an equation looks. Now the only difference is, is that when we have a formula we have multiple variables so our answer is just going to still have a bunch of variables in it. We're not going to get it down to like x equals 3 or anything. So we're going to look at the most fundamental relationship in algebra that we pretty much study, and that is the formula for distance in terms of rate and time. This says distance equals rate times time, and when I ask you to solve a formula for a specific variable, that means I want you to get this variable by itself. So I want to get r by itself, okay? And so I think about, hey, what's been done to r? It's been multiplied by t. How do I get rid of multiplied by t? Well, I divide both sides by t using my division property of equality. That means the t's are gone, and I'm left with d over t equals r. And guess what I have done? I have just transformed that formula to be r equals. And what this means for formulas is that now I have a formula for rate in terms of distance and time. Um, and sometimes you want to do that. Sometimes, you know, if you want to, you don't want the circumference, you want the diameter. Or you don't want the area, you want the length. Then this is what you're going to do. So let's look at this example. I have uh, 1 half base times height equals area. This is the area formula for a triangle. And I want to solve it for the height. So I want a formula for height of a triangle in terms of its area and its base. And I chose this example because it's really good to show how to get rid of a fraction when you're transforming a formula. So I'm going to get rid of the 1 half first uh, and, uh, by multiplying by 2. So one thing you have to be very careful of is you want to try to avoid getting a fraction in a fraction. So don't divide this by a half, just multiply by the reciprocal. So you get 2a equals bh. And then I wanted to get h by itself, so then I have to uh, divide both sides by b. And I get my new formula, which is height equals 2a over b. And this is the way I want this to look. If you transform a formula and if you ever get a fraction in a fraction, your job is to get rid of it. Now I say this because if I took this example and I divided both sides by one half base, which I can totally do um, to get rid of the one half and the base, I'm going to get the height equals a over one half b. And this is big frowny face. I don't want a fraction in a fraction. So if you want to get rid of the fraction when you're transforming a formula, multiply by the reciprocal to just to get rid of it. So here's another example of a formula you should recognize. This is c equals 2 pi r, and I want to solve it for r. And c stands for circumference, and pi means it's round, which means I'm looking at the formula to find the circumference of the circle in terms of the radius. And I want to solve it for r. Now I chose this example because I want you to see that you can um, get rid of multiple things at the same time. So I have 2 pi times r and I want to get r by itself. And I can get rid of it piecewise. I can divide by 2 and then in the second step divide by pi. But what that's going to give me if I do this, I get c over 2 equals pi r. And then I have to divide both sides by pi. Ew. And I get c over 2 over pi equals r. And this is a big frowny face because I never, ever, ever want to see a fraction in a fraction. So instead of dividing it off piecewise, I'm going to divide off the 2 pi in a single step. Okay, And I show you this because you're going to do examples where you're going to want to get rid of more than one thing at once. So I can get rid of the 2 pi, and I'm left with c over 2 pi equals r. And this is preferred because it's just a plain old fraction. So I have another formula you should recognize. You should recognize this as the perimeter of a rectangle given the length and the width. So I want you to solve the perimeter of the rectangle for the length. And there are two ways to do this. Um, you can distribute uh, if you want to. Um, but if you distribute, you're going to have to do extra steps to get it into the format that I want. And the format that I want is something that is simplified. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I choose to distribute, um, I get P equals 2L plus 2W, right? And I want to solve for L. So I have to subtract off 2W from both sides. And I get P minus 2W equals 2L. 
and then I divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to divide it like this, because then I get p over 2 minus w equals l, because those 2's cancel. And this is the format that I want it in. All right. So if you distribute, you have to make sure that there's nothing that you can simplify. Because what I see a lot of people do for this problem is they'll be at the p minus 2w equals 2l stage, and they'll divide by 2 like this, the whole side, um, and they'll say p minus 2w over 2 equals l, and this is not simplified because I can divide out the 2, but they don't just cancel. Um, I have to rewrite it like this anyway, and then those cancel to get my right answer. So if you're going to distribute and you divide, make sure you divide piecemeal, piecemeal like that if you can uh, to make it in the right format. Now if you remember from when we did the distributed property, you don't have to distribute this at all. Um, because I'm solving for something inside and it's just a plain old distribution over here. So my first step could actually be to divide both sides by 2 and I get p over 2 equals L plus W, and then all I have to do is subtract off my W, so I get P over 2 minus W equals L. So um, no matter how I do it, you know, just be very careful when you distribute because sometimes you have to leave it uh, to simplify it a bit. So when you do have to, if you do have to divide like this, um, make sure you divide piecewise, or you can do what I did and avoid that altogether by not even distributing. So in this last example, we're going to do something uh, that you don't recognize because uh, I just made this formula up. And I want to solve this for j. Okay. Um, so one of the reasons why I made this example up is because I need to make sure you understand something. That uh, you can't just subtract off an f. Okay, don't. You can't do that. Um, when I said that was like x plus 3 over some number, you couldn't just subtract off the 3. Because is that really an f? No, it's really f over d. So if I want to solve for something that's in a fraction and it's in the numerator, um, one of the best ways to do this is to remember that this divide by d is the same thing as multiply by 1 over d. Okay, And so then I can get rid of the 1 over d or the divide by d altogether by multiplying both sides by d. And so those are gone. And I'm just left with f plus j equals, and I need to evaluate the multiplication. So I have md over 4. All right. And if I'm solving for j, I just need to subtract off the f. So I get j equals md over 4 minus f. And this thing here is the transform formula. Now to check to see if you understand how to transform a formula, which means solve an equation that has a bunch of variables in it, uh, and the answer is going to have a bunch of variables in it. So solve each equation for the indicated variable. So you take this equation and you get t by itself. Solve for t. The second equation I want you to solve for that m, and be careful because right now it's in the denominator. And then for the third one, which is actually a real formula, this is the volume of a cone, I want you to solve the volume of a cone formula for the height of the cone. 